the first day that we come to the fiberglass shop. What's that mean? Lightning strikes so that your radio turns on? Okay. I'm not surprised, but can we catch a break? Ladies and gentlemen, we are back in the itty bitty today. We have finally made it to the fiberglass shop. It has been a long six months of pure failure, a lot of swallowing of pride, a lot of realizing this is a massive project and I can't do it alone. If you missed the last episode, we drove the itty bitty through the heart of one of the biggest cities in my area during rush hour. Just to get it to this place, we risked it for the biscuit as the young kids are saying. Got the boat stationary, finally got the boat braced up. I know it's been three months of people nonstop commenting, brace the boat, brace the boat. She's braced. She has a little bit of stability to her. She still likes to shake it, shake what her mama gave her. We need to reinforce that later on, but the truth is I've done everything backwards. We redid some framing and then we worked down. They told me first thing, transom. Back of the boat has to be redone then do the floor and the stringers, then work your way up. Now, I know this is the first day that something big's happening, but this is not the first day that I've been working on the itty bitty. I've actually been here two days before doing some prep work, getting fiberglass ready, and actually removing this transom. I'm gonna go ahead and roll those clips now. There's ants everywhere. Oh. There's actually some good wood left in the boat. I think this back layer is completely toast, but this front layer actually had a little backbone to her. However, this side was completely mud and termites. We're currently halfway through removing the transom. This is the one part of the whole restoration where he suggested I kind of keep my hands off. Apparently gel coating is extremely difficult. Not something you want to do. I'm just here for morale. I guess the bug bombs really didn't do their job. The transom is absolutely full of termites. Full. getting really bad. I don't know how safe it is to stay here all day. In an hour, we have to leave whether we're done or not. Hey, Bill. My name is Mr. Old Bill David Gravy. Getting ready for the tornadoes? Yeah, we're getting ready for the tornadoes. Are you bunkered down? Oh, yeah. I'm getting ready for them as well. How are you getting ready for them? Oh, just, uh, you know, being cute. Bill, we finally got the itty bitty to where it needs to be. Today we're replacing the transom, doing some good things. Just want to let you know that this wouldn't be possible without all your effort. Come on, girl. Yeah, Bill, Bill helped strap the girth down so the girth, you know, wouldn't flop in the air and flip off the trailer. Hmm. Well worded. Well worded. You be safe out there. Don't get blown all the way to California without me. All right. I won't. <laughs> I love you. Love you too, Dad. Bye. So day two, we took a massive piece of cardboard after we cleaned out the transom of all the old muck and fiberglass, shoved this bad girl in there. Then we took a blade and cut the shape out. Once we had the shape of the transom, we laid it on this plywood and we were able to cut out the transom shaped plywood that's now in the boat. We are getting mighty close to actually putting the transom in. It's happening so much faster than I thought it was gonna happen. Tomorrow, we should be almost completely done with the transom. We're about to prep the fiberglass right now, get all the wood sitting ready. So tomorrow we come in, soak everything in resin, throw it in there, fingers crossed it works. So this is a one ounce chop strand fiberglass mat. We're gonna be cutting four pieces. Three of them will be the same size as the pattern and the fourth size will be oversized. So we'll be covering the last piece. Okay. Gotta get up here on the table and 
reach across and cut. And it doesn't have to be cut exact as long as it's close. This is our cutout for the outdrive. And we'll be running our clamps through this hole here. We have some excess that we can use for other jobs that we'll save. So we use the transom board as our pattern and now we can just cut our remaining pieces from this, from this pattern. I've always been so terrified by fiberglass work. I don't know why. A lot of times it's good to wear some long sleeves or a sweatshirt when you're working with it. Because right. it will get in your skin. Some people like to wear latex gloves. You just a bare hands kind of man? Yeah, I've done it so many years. I kind of know what I can do, what I'm getting away with. Right, right. So now we've got two. Could I give one a shot? Sure. If I mess it up, I'll buy it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> How hard you push? Match pretty hard. Tell me if I'm doing something wrong. You're doing good. <laughs> Better you than me. So does this stuff get in your hand? How it is right now? Uh, it does not bother me. <laughs> what uh? Yeah, that's what I like what, to hear. Uh, what bothers me if I'm standing with a grinder and a little fiberglass bits, you know, they'll get up in your hand. So I'll wear I'll wear work gloves when I do work like that. All right, good deal. Good deal. I'll take it. Okay. The last piece will be oversized. Okay. So I'm going to go about four inches out beyond the edge okay. of the pattern. We'll have everything lined up so in the morning we'll be ready to go. Looking forward to it. Today's the day that matters. Today's the day that I wanted to be here for the full thing, work and get my hands all resin, glass. We're gonna be putting the new transom in, fiberglassing that girl in there, and starting the itty bitty right. Foundation at the base, strength rises from the bottom. We're normally doing all this from the outside. Ah. But we can't do it with the way the boat's designed, so it's gonna be more of a challenge for us to get it in alignment. This is your first clamp. Okay. It's gonna come in here at the bottom. All right. You just hand it up to us. Okay. And this will slide onto it on here. These are just spacers. This is your final nut. Gotcha. Tighten this. Second one, you'll put this one, hand it to us. We'll put it through and hold it up here. Then you'll slide this board on through that hole right here. And then you'll take these washers and nuts. We'll tighten it down. That'll lock in here and here. And then we'll take this board behind you. Okay. Come across the top. And the big We're clamps. probably going to have to come below these. I didn't release them while sticking out. out. So we'll put them right under these two, and then we got some C clamps. We'll tighten those down. So that'll lock it in three different places. It should be good and straight. All right, good. You ever got a colonoscopy, Tommy? Trying to make a heart rate raise the noise of that. You ready to get started? Yes, sir. Get it going. So you're mixing yeah, resin and catalyst? Yeah, we're catalyzing the resin. And, uh, yeah, go ahead and mix up one for each of us. And uh, we're going to wet the surface of the transom first to get it good and, good and wet. And then we're going to start laying the fiberglass. So how long do you have once it's, once it's going? I mean, honestly, probably a good 45 minutes this morning because it's a little cool still. It's, yeah. A lot of moisture in there. So we'll have a little more work time probably than we typically would. It's better to do this obviously in the morning when it's not as it's not as hot. So, right. so we're gonna go ahead and wet the surface of this. We've already taped off the holes from the outside so the resin can't run through and okay. drip down the back side of the transfer. So we're just gonna try to keep moving, get everything wet out. Get it ready for the board, start putting the transom boards in. You can go ahead and hand me a piece of fiberglass, Kevin. I'll get it to close. Okay, we're going to make sure the hole is lined up here in the center for the outdrive. A little tight on working space today. <laughs> all right, we're going to get all the air worked out of fiberglass. Go ahead and start wetting it out. And the objective is try to get all of the white out of the surface. And Darkens up. It's some good father-son bonding. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Get 
think of a better way. <laughs> really fast before Tim and Kevin make me miss my dad anymore. Love you, Dad. Appreciate you responding to all the mean comments and stooping down to the haters level, but I love you. Today's video is brought to you by Anchor. My friends over at Anchor are known around the world as being the number one mobile charging brand. Dion, <clears throat> dang, dang. Number one, the Anchor 521 charger is similar in size to the original iPhone 20 watt charger, but this bad boy has a max of 40 watts. The charger also comes with two ports, so you can charge multiple Apple products at the same time without taking up more outlets than you need. Damn, dang, dang. The 511 has one single port. The 521 has two ports. The new and improved Anchor chargers have the ability to charge your MacBook Air at full speed when using a single port. They can charge your phone up to three times as fast as the original Apple five watt charger. You can order, ah! I really wanna put carpet down pronto. They also have cables to fit iPhones and MacBook Pro computers or Air. If you guys would like to snag an Anchor charger, make sure to click on the link in the description. Now back to the boat. Yeah, this uh, Kevin is our, our third generation. My dad started this business 50 years ago. I got my degree in hospital administration and decided to use it out here working on boats. <laughs> Funny thing is, I don't even own a boat. Really? <laughs> I've never owned a boat, but I've worked on, I guess, literally thousands through the years. I've probably been working on boats for about 35 years now. And then Kevin's been with us about uh, probably seven years. So he's gonna take over at some point. We're kind of working in that direction. Cool. Is this one of the biggest projects y'all have done? As far as like size of the transom and floor and stringers, it's, yeah, it's a pretty big one. At least as long as I've been out here. Yeah. She's a big girl. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a huge. It's probably the biggest transom I've ever put in a person. These boats were made like two or three years. I don't know if they were just so unsafe they discontinued them or what but huh. we're gonna mix up something in a little while we call it goop but basically what it is is chopped strand fiberglass and resin it's a little paste we make and what it does it fills in the gap down here at the bottom of the transom so it makes sure that there's no void because the board's not gonna fit 100 percent right against the bottom and that goop will fill in the gap gotcha Let's go ahead and get this in place. Get Andrew to help us get lined up here in the center. Having this second piece of fiberglass just gives us a lot better backing to work against, a better bond. Right. We're trying to eliminate any white spice. If it's white, it means it didn't get any resin. So that's what we're looking for is white. For some reason, I was under the impression that doing a transom would take multiple weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, honestly, the most of the work in a transom is the preparation, putting it back together and completing it after it's been put in. The actual installation is not that difficult, but we spent about four days actually cutting the transom out. A lot of people think, well, heck, you know, all it is is two pieces of plywood. I can't see that it's that big a deal, but it's, it's all the preparation that goes into it. What Kevin's going to do is make up the goop. Okay. What it is is uh, just chop strand mat. And, uh, We've got a special gun that cuts it into small fibers. We just take it and mix it with the resin and it makes a real thick, kind of like peanut butter texture mm. paste that we're gonna put down. We call it goop. Nothing technical about doing this. We're just Cut. trying to fill in the void here. So. Shove it in there? Yeah. You do that up the edges as well or just yeah, the bottom? Yeah, but what we'll do there is we'll put that in after we get the boards. It's real critical down here where the drain plug is. A little white still when we get out. So we're just about ready to put in the first board here. Does that resin give you a nice buzz at all? Uh, if you're in a closed environment, yeah, it will. <laughs> nice. But uh, I'm kind of lightweight, so we try to stay in the open air environment. Right. See all that stuff I learned in kindergarten paid off. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna put our first board in. All right. And this is gonna be a little bit of a challenge getting it in there, so. All right. Get the cameras rolling, baby. People love a challenge. Help us do it, actually. Okay. Oh, yeah. Get to know something. Here we go. Like two. Got it. Cool. 
That's what we want. Swimwear. First one's in. I'm excited just to see some professional progression on the itty bitty. Got about a six month record of pure losses right now. You know? So do we clamp after? We're gonna leave the clamps on overnight and make sure that everything's locked in good solid. So we you hold the center. Gotcha. We purposely cut this cutout smaller. Yeah. We'll cut it from the outside. So if if it doesn't line up perfectly, we still got yeah, we've got room right here. Okay. So the longer you're in here, the worse the fumes get. Okay. So we start kind of spinning a little bit. You know? All right. So if somebody were trying to do this themselves, they probably would want to wear a respirator just, you know, for safety reasons, but we've got real good ventilation in here in the building, so. And we're men's men, you yeah, know? Yeah, we've, uh... All right. With the first layer of resin and all you put on there, mm -hmm. is there a timeline that you have to have all of this done? I would say probably 30 minutes today is gonna be our maximum time. So okay. I mean, I'm guessing we're at the 20 minute mark, I don't know. Okay. So we'll go around at the end and tie some real heavy laminate all the way around to uh, to lock it in good and solid. So it'll be some real heavy woven rope and much heavier than what we're using here. Try to make it look like I'm helping weave more than I am. Yeah. Video. Side, but... Huh? Yep. Yep. Cool. That's what we want. All right. If you'll go ahead and hand me that first clamp with the threads. And then uh, you'll slide that other bar on top of it. Gotcha. All right. All right, I'm tight then now. Yeah. How tight you want it? Pretty much as tight as you can go. Oh, okay. Oh. That should be good for that one. We'll go ahead and get the next one started if you'll hand me that next one putting the board on the outside of this one. Board? So we're trying to keep the transom as straight as we can get it. Yeah, yeah it looks a little thick. It'll it'll go through if I drop the board some. Yeah, I'll probably drop it down maybe where that washer can catch that lip. Okay. On the pipe you already? Yeah, it was tough getting on there, I think. Oh my god. Mm. Getting close. It's happening. Enjoy it while it lasts. Been pretty easy there. Those threads we've used them for years, so I'm sure they're worn. And that lip gonna hold, you think? Uh, I guess as tight as the lip will allow. That's that washer slipping through. Seems like it's catching pretty good. We'll stop it there. Let's go ahead and get this other board. Yeah. Put it on the top. We're gonna try to pull this together, and that'll be the purpose of putting this last board in. And we'll, we'll grab that. Yeah, stick lamp right here. Come down. Is that all the way across? A little bit further, Kevin. How many C clamps? All of them? Yeah. Tommy tighten those loose ones. Such a surreal feeling watching it come together. When I bought this boat, I really didn't know what I was signing up for, but it's really cool to see we're actually gonna make it happen and there's some life getting back into her. Well, the transom is probably the most critical component of the boat. So this was a huge step, what we just did, getting this yeah. put in, replaced, lined up good, and right. covered everything. So it, it's good and strong. Like I said, tomorrow we'll come in and It'll be fully cured. We'll come on the inside, yeah. fiberglass the front side of the transom. And once we feel like everything is good and solid, we'll probably move on to the motor mounts for, uh, next. Okay. So it's all the interior of those rotten. Gotcha. That's these two blocks with the motor. You can see with the holes. If you ran a screwdriver in there, all that interior wood is rotten. Okay. We're gonna leave the shell, cut the top cap off, and dig out everything on the inside that's rot, and come in there and replace all that interior and then fiberglass it back together. So that'll be our second step. Transom first, motor mount second, and then okay. we'll move on to the 
the fun part? String, yeah, the stringer system, and I think you're going to get a lot more involved at that point. All right, good. So, I guess that's all uh, Transom. for today. Appreciate it. Yeah. Pumps me up. Yeah. Huge shout out to Kevin and Tim for working quick and getting us a step closer to being on the water. Well, folks, that is a wrap for today's itty bitty houseboat update. We are genuinely covering ground quick. These guys know what they're doing. They're confident and I feel like I just signed up for the quick class on how to do transoms, fiberglass, and how to properly restore a boat. Because of how important a healthy transom is on a boat, I really stayed out of the way, just tried to learn as much as I could because when it comes to the floor and the bulkheads, that'll be my turn to get a little filthy. Thank you guys for tuning in, watching today's video. Yet another step closer to getting the itty bitty on the water. I love you guys, appreciate you. See you on the next one, peace.